Hello, hello, hello again. What's up, what's up, YouTube family again? It's your guy Albert again. In case you are new in this channel, eh? remember to subscribe. Today, again, as I promised, I will just try to go around this America and find out people in Africa they don't know what's going on in America, they don't know what how people live in America. People think like in America, people just like are living that good life, like people everybody stay on the same on the same good life, but here again. I've been saying this one. People have never seen one, this one before. Like there's people in America who don't have, who doesn't have even a place to uh, something to eat. They don't have a place to sleep. Like here today, I just have to. I try to find one of my guy here. He's a he's an American guy, as you can see, all guys. He will tell us the story. He's a homeless. He doesn't have a place to eat. He doesn't have a, a place to sleep. I had to talk to him. He was living. It was his pressure to come to me and say something like we can do something then if you don't mind sir you can just say what's your name yeah. my name is uh, Thomas Burns mm -hmm. I was born and raised here in Indianapolis I've been out of prison for about eight months and after I got out of prison I came home and my kids were somewhat grown I did about four years altogether in the Westville Correctional uh, facility over here in Indiana and I got involved with uh, gangs while I was on the inside and I grew up over around over here in Hallville. I was already involved with gangs and I got involved with a bunch okay. of drugs and everything. So, I mean, I've got clean. I've been seven years clean, so. So, you have kids, right? Yeah. That's what you say, right? Yes. You have kids and a wife? Yeah, I, well, the wife's me and are on bad terms. The, kid but, uh, the kids are at my place. We're fighting. We're basically doing the joint custody thing without doing the courts. Okay. So, right now you claim yourself to be homeless. Yes. Okay, because I found you with this thing. This is the thing to show people. Yes. Like, how long do you stay on the road? I was on the road right before I went to prison. I was on the road off and on for about, let's say, since I was about 17, 18. Just on the road? like. Yeah, just like, tra I've been to California and back here to Indy, New York and back, Florida and back, Canada. You know, I've been all over the place in the United States, and I've just always came back here. <laughs> so, for those one who never understand this story, it's very... Sometimes it's a story like people may not understand in Africa, like this happens. But again, you can tell us how do you find yourself being homeless? How do you find yourself like you can't, you can't, why can't you go to work? Why is it like? Like I do work, but I work my late night shifts. I do warehouse work for Amazon over on girls school. That's my late night work, but I still got bills to pay and everything else. My light bill for the garage and everything, that's basically wiping out me. I'm getting charged $800 a month so, to stay in a little garage right now. So it means you work, but you you still can't get enough I still money. can't make enough. Yeah. Enough money. I got kids yeah. and I've got, you know, trying to make myself stable with an apartment. I only have 500 in my savings right now. So, what do you mean by you can't get enough money? Like, it means like it doesn't get enough money to get you a house? Yeah. Well, I mean, give me an apartment. Apartment, it can't get you? Yeah, but I've been trying to save up for the apartment. But the problem is I was on parole and I literally left with $500 in my savings when I left prison. Okay. I haven't touched a dime of it. Why is it you can't do the second job then? I haven't really thought about it all that much. Plus, I have really nobody to watch my kids all the time. So, I mean, it's just me and them. But I got a friend next door that always watches them. And, you know, my mom's available. She'll watch them. But my mom works almost seven days a week. So, so I think it's not easy being staying on the road, like trying to get some money. Right. How much you? How much can you make by day, like after people do from to give something? On how a much? good day, like Memorial Day, I made almost like two hundred in just one day. But on a normal day like this, I make probably. How many hours are those? Like, do you stay on the road? I was like, how many hours would I stay on there? Yeah, to get that two hundred. Yeah, I'd stay from morning till night. Morning to night. Yeah. You make two hundred. Probably right about around. I stayed out from like six a.m. to nine p.m. <laughs> I mean, it's good money, but different days, different results. Whose fault is this? Like, I, I mean, I honestly can blame myself. You know, I, I was not what my parents had expected me to be. My parents didn't raise me like this, but I was always the one that wanted to go out, you know, party. Uh, waste. I wasted my 20s going out doing drugs, and I went, and it was just uh, my, my early 20s and my mid-teens were like one of my uh, worst part of my years. How old are you? I'm, I'm, I'll be 30 on a, in April next year. Okay. Yeah. And now it's just like, I look back at my life like I wish I wouldn't have wasted it now just because I'm getting older now I'm to the point like, what happened? <laughs> How many kids you got? Oh, I've got two kids. Uh, from different mom or same mom? Um, I got one mom. One mom? Yeah. I uh, got their name. How old the kid? Uh, they're, uh, this one's two years old, this one's five. So this is the name, okay. Yes. This is the tattoo for the kid. Yeah. Karaya and Sheree, my Karaya kids are mixed. And? 
Shan, yeah? Yes. Okay. My baby mom's half African and half Haitian. So she has she hold her full custody of the kid? She wants full custody. She ain't getting full custody. <laughs> what she, she does? Uh, the what? What she do? Uh, she doesn't do nothing. She collects welfare. Huh? She collects welfare. Welfare? Yeah. What's that? She lives up there in Kokomo. It's a bad story with her. Her mom smoking crack and everything else. And I don't get involved with her that much just because I won't let her go home to that. I don't want my daughter, you know, I don't want my kids being around that just because I don't want them to have the same results I had growing up. Well, so, so this thing of being like, kind of like you can't get the pattern is like, they, they can't approve because of your incomes, low, just. Mostly my felons, my felonies. Uh, I've got an assault. Oh, okay. I've got an assault on an officer. I've got, um, plus, I've got multiple misconduct reports in prison. Yeah, I used to beat on, I used to assault inmate and staff, and I, they got so bad that they kept me in solitary by myself 23 hours a day, one hour for rec and shower. And okay. Yeah, I have quite those, the extensive record. So how do you get those felony stuff? Is it your fault stuff? The what? How do you get the felony? How do I get the felony? <laughs> um, well, I assaulted an officer over there on Michigan and Berwick over here on the west side of town back in 2000 say about 2012 and then I did my little time on that and then I went out on probation because I went to a work release program where it was supposed to help me get better well they found a bunch of contraband in my tote and violated me sent me back to jail and then I was on a parole hold because I was waiting for parole to make their decision they sent me back to prison I did two more years I got out and then I was free and then I caught another charge of possession of a firearm but I was able to beat it down because my mom paid a lawyer ten thousand dollars all the way from Tennessee to come represent me and he beat it down to a level six and all I did was about 364 days in total and uh, the jail I didn't even get shipped out that time and the third time I went to uh, Miami Correctional mm -hmm. and I did my charge on possession of cocaine and then it was resisting arrest and and I've, I've just literally been all over the place and I've, I've tried to stay out. Problem is, um, I believe that the criminal justice system doesn't make people better in America. It makes, they make criminals there. Mm -hmm. You go in hoping you can re rehab yourself, but in all actuality, you'll come out worse than when you went in. Okay. Do you drive? Do you have a car? Do you have a license? Used to have a dirt bike, but that ended up breaking down. My mother's going to end up having... My mom told me she'd buy me a new a little dirt bike probably around July or August. But I have a CD trust fund account that I don't have control of. I have money. I just don't have access to it because I had, I had got hit by a car back in 2009 and I sued the woman that hit me, got a hundred grand and I went nuts with it and spent 25 grand in two weeks. I, I went on a cocaine binge and and I ended up, uh, my mom locked up the rest of the money, and now I can't see the rest of it for like a year and a half. How does your license look like? Is it in, it's a, able to use it? I don't have a photo ID, unfortunately. I lost my photo ID because I was roaming around out here late night. About, but can you drive on the road? Is this suspended license? Um, no, I can actually drive on the road if I have like a moped or whatever. You if can I, drive? Yeah. Okay. If I have a moped, I can drive it with no like plate or anything. So if somebody give you a, a car, you can still use it? You can... Yeah, I mean, I, I can drive a vehicle. I mean, it just depends. I can't drive manuals. I can drive automatics. That's about it. Uh -huh. But I haven't really had much training with cars. It's mostly been motorcycles and mopeds and dirt bikes for me. I like them because, you know, they're more sustainable, but I got to have the car for my kids and everything. But I try to do the, I try to do the whole, you know, I'm trying to make sure I'm stable for my kids just because I don't want them going through, you know, I've been through a pretty painful, do tough life. Do you do life. drugs? Do you do drinks? Do you do... No, I've actually been seven years clean off drugs. I used to be in, on methamphetamines and coke and everything else. I've been clean off that. Mm -hmm. I found Jesus and everything when I was on but the you inside. you used to drink? Yeah, I used to drink, but it was like Moscato shot of wine here and there. How about uh, drugs? Um, I used to do meth. I was seven years clean on that. I used to do that really you used heavy. To do that? Yeah, I used to really heavy and i used to do them out in this little vicinity out here all the time i used to camp out behind this sam's club years ago mm -hmm. and i used to cook meth right behind that uh, right behind the sam's club and it was got so bad they built a fence over there now where you can't even get it because i've been clean seven years i've camped out there probably about nine about nine years ago give or take so where do you sit right now like 
Oh, I sleep in the garage over there on the west side of Indianapolis, and with, uh, I have Who's my. Garage is down? The what? Who's the garage? Who's the owner of the garage? Oh, the owner of the garage, my buddy. He he owns the house, but I get the garage. He has his whole family in the house. I ain't gonna you know be an intrude like that. And plus, I've made that garage basically like my little home. I mean, I went and paid and had the electrical fixed in it. I've got multiple outlets in it. Mm -hmm. I've got you know I got running water. I've got plumbing in it. So, I mean, at least I've got the base necessities for like a setup. But it's until I can get my apartments when I'll be fully settled. So guys, for those one who doesn't understand what's the garage, this guy is sleeping in the garage. The garage is the place where you park your car. That means like that's a parking, the, the parking space. It's not, it's not something safe. There's no heat. There's nothing. Remember, like in the time, that place is not. It's like, it's like cold like hell. Like America here, when the the temp is like negative, he always feels that one. It's like sleeping in a place like you cannot. Imagine somebody sleeping. Do you have a mattress on the Yes, side? I got a bed and everything. Got a bed for my kids. Like I said, I've got everything. Do you have a heater? Do we give you the heater? Yes. I have the heating and everything. The heatings, they got one of those little units where it like circulates it. Mm -hmm. I ended up paying to have one of those installed. I I put almost 8,000, 9,000 into that garage alone just so getting... So when do you see yourself in two years coming? Two years. Hopefully I can stay out of prison and hopefully get my, you know, apartment and get a do stick. You see, do you see that dream coming on your life? I do, but I mean, like I said, I've I had a hard time getting that job at Amazon just with my felonies because they were going like, yeah, we do hire Which felons. Amazon are you working at? The what? Which Amazon? Uh, Indy 4 over here on, uh, you know, where girls school is. Man, they pay pretty good. They do, but they were looking at my charges and the thing was when they did the, but they do a background check on you. And the thing is they said, we do hire felons, but it's like, your case is pretty extensive. And I was like, what do you mean? They was like, well, you got assault on an officer here. And I, I don't know, a lot of places are police pro. I don't really respect the cops all that much. Just because I've had so many runs in. So they haven't them. approved you yet? The what? They already approved you already? Yeah. I mean, yeah, I've already got the job and everything, but the thing is, I work night How shifts. How much they pay you per hour? They pay me about 16 17 an hour. It's weekly pay, but the thing is, I pay my rent. I make sure my kids are fed and well taken care of. You know, I'm trying to make sure my little ones are getting ready to start school here soon, you know. Do they and give you overtime, too? They do, but I try not to take, because I try to spend as much time as possible with my kids, because I love my babies. So I'm trying to spend as much possible time with them and work at the same time. And I'm trying to get into my online school and everything. I earned my GED when I was in prison. So So how does the felony affect you? Like a felony makes you like you don't get the job? That's what that I mean, the felony kind of, it, it screws you a little bit. I mean, depending on... Oh yeah, I mean it'll it'll mess you up, you know. I mean it is and the system stuff like that. Yeah, I mean the system's really corrupt here in America. It's okay. just just the justice system alone is screwy. You know, I got I've served a total of probably a good four or five years out of my life, just in in and out, in and out. And it, I noticed I was becoming a frequent flyer. It's kind of bad when you step into the jail or the prison. You know half the people in there, and it's yeah. I'm, have you have you ever? I've gone out of America, like out of the country. I've been to Canada. In Canada? Yeah. I've been how do you like? How do you like over there? Uh, it was beautiful. I loved the mountains. I loved the forest. So you, do know. you wish to go out of America for nah, a change can't. of life? I can't anymore because I'm a felon. So. So okay, if somebody give you like a way to go out of America, what do you what do you think? We would just prefer. Well, leave America and just go there? Love this country, but I would leave it in a heartbeat if I ever had that chance. You love this country? Love this country, but I'd leave it in a heartbeat. <laughs> I don't like who runs it. <laughs> I don't like the government at all. I don't respect the government's policies. I don't... Okay. Yeah. So the policy, the government policies, the way they screw up people, that's what makes yeah. you feel like they make you your life so miserable but the way you think. That's the government think, holds right? down the lower class. <laughs> that's what I believe, you know. I mean, my, that's my profound belief. You know, I grew up in over on the west side of Hallville and all I saw was just, yeah, we live in the ghetto, but we try to make the best of what we are given. And, you know, but times are still tough because, you know, the system, we can afford the wars, but we can't afford the, to feed the poor. So, how far do you live from here? Like, where? Um, I live about four miles over there on Michigan and Berwick Avenue. How do you get there? Uh, I usually take the bus. So you take a bus from yeah. here? I had a 31 day pass. I usually take it from there to there. Mine expired today. I have to go buy another day pass at the bus station, but I buy them on the bus usually if I don't have my 31 day on me. So guys, as you can hear, this guy lives like four miles away from the place he, I just found him was trying to get his money for the day. He has to take a pass. He has to wait for the time for the bus to come and then take the bus to the place to live. Sometimes, do you walk? Do you walk? walk yeah, yourself? I work like, yeah, I walk to go to work. You walk to what? Yeah, I walk to work. Sometimes yeah. he has to walk to work. 
So now you can believe. Allow me to speak in my Swahili. Yeah, you're good, you're good. My name is Thomas Burns. Thomas Burns. Yes, sir. I thank you, thank you very much, sir. Yep, you are very welcome. I'm so happy to share your story. Yes. Actually, people in Africa, they don't know. Like, in America, there's homeless people. Yeah. We do always tell them that they're homeless people. People right. like, it's like anywhere, anywhere in the country, right. people feel like right. there's life and there's life for others. Right. It's all kind of difference. So everybody has to feel it, right? Right. Yeah. But Amen. thank you I very much it. for sharing your story. You. I yep, appreciate yep. you. I keep on updating you. I will thank keep you. on checking on you. Thank I will you. take your number from here. Yep, yep. Then I'll make sure I'll tip you something yep, yep. to make sure like you spare your time to share your story. Right. And everybody else there, maybe, well, I will say this, I'll pray for you. Right, the two years you say, yep, yep. things will change. Oh, yes. Keep on pushing. Keep on believing. And don't do drugs. Right. I think drugs is the most thing makes people don't understand, right? Said I can't not because I can't do it no more because of my kids. So yeah. So you can. You wanna leave, leave your number? Um yeah. Yeah. So. Well, you can write your number down here. Yeah, my, I got my number down there. Where is it? It's uh, right there. Seven six five two seven eight seven five two four. So guys, this is the number. In case you wanna reach out this guy, you can send something to him. This is number 765-278-7524. That's you said with plus one. Yeah, for those one who don't, this is American number. The American mm -hmm. code, people don't understand this one. You have to so dial this the, the number. Yeah. You can send this guy something. At least, if you get something, yep. just know it's from me who just share the story. People like will just much. send you something and we pray for you. In like the future, for two years coming, maybe one year, maybe five months, maybe two months, right. you'll be out of the street trying to share this one. Right. Don't be, don't be shy to share right. your story. That's when the story be reached out there, and people will help you out. Right. And everybody will be praying for you. Right. Hopefully, things will change. Right. I hope so too. Anything to say to them? Right. Well, uh, I just want to say something to the you know young generation out there. Don't end up like me, because I tell you what, that you don't want none of what this really is this is the real life and that's all i gotta say that's how you say so guys that's all you can say for now peace, peace. Yeah. thank you very much thank, thank you very much you.